Howdy y'all, you got the Bulldog on the channel. Last few videos when I've done strut jobs, I have done quick struts. That's the complete strut. Everything's already assembled. You just take one out, put one in. I've done enough of them that I didn't film myself taking the strut out. But what I am gonna do is show you what it's like to take a strut apart. It requires a spring compressor and I've made my own little system to hold the strut in place they have one that mounts to the wall and screws down, holds everything secure. Those things are expensive. You can get an El Cheapo from Harbor Freight. And I've made myself a brace to hold the strut in place. The reason we're not doing quick struts on the, these is because they cost a little bit more. And this customer is a skin flint, a miserly little cheapskate. that doesn't want to spend money on anything mine it's my car and I can eat a little bit of time to take this thing apart and if there's a rattle or a bad mount I know who to blame so I'm gonna pull my struts apart and change just the struts themselves my wife told me the other day that there's a noise in it I drove it a quarter mile and I knew what was going on unfortunately it appears to just be the strut here's my brace that I put on it's just an angle iron that's bolted to the the workbench here and Drilled a hole here, put a bolt through it, welded it on, and got a nut on that, curved piece of metal, and welded a nut here with a hole. And I'm gonna show you how I mount this thing in place. The reason I did this is because the struts back on a Cutlass Supreme, I think back in the mid to late 90s, were multi-piece and I had to change some springs. They're made to be changed inside the vehicle. And I needed something to hold still, so here we go. And I've used it ever since because it makes the job so much easier. You don't have one more thing dancing around on you. Here's the top of my strut. You can see where it's been blown out and the uh, uh, thing is busted down inside of itself. It's rattling around inside and chirping and squawking whenever it jounces. Now, one thing that I do is I make sure that I line up the knuckle with the perpendicular axis of my deal here. That way, when I pull my mount off, I pull the spring and everything off in one piece and set it aside. And I'll put my new strut into place and I'll pick the thing up and that way everything's clocked correctly when I put it back. Now this is a multi-stage process that I use. Don't freak out. I tap this while it's still got tension on it. Enough to break the nut loose. And that's why I'm holding on to the socket because so it can't freewheel and spin off of there because this is a grenade. You know, you pull the pin, it's going to explode. I back it up until I can see the nut moving. Now I got the compressor up here. This one piece compressor that we bought is a whole lot better than the two piece because this one won't slide around and pinch your fingers. You want to torque it down until you get some tension off. It did hit the limit. Now we can buzz this thing off. There we go. Oh, 
and that off. Pull the spring and everything off in one piece. What I'm checking right now, you can't see me doing it. The camera don't track with me. I'm trying to move around the mount inside of the rubber to make sure that it's not busted or anything. I looked at it before, it looks good. So I'm gonna scoot this off to the side amongst the mess that we have here. This will never stop. Now I'm gonna pull I'm going to pull my spring seat rubber off of this. Again, I'm keeping everything clocked correctly. Here's the, wow. Ah, let's put it back on. We can get another 10 miles out. I got the good out of it. Here we got our new ones. I bought mid grades for it, which I usually don't do. I usually get the Spectrums. These are the Monroe Maddox. Uh, since this is generic video, I'm not gonna tell you the part number, but uh, the deal is this car has got 300,000 on it and we're planning on replacing it before too long if I can get something else built. So I'm just putting something on there that's not gonna kill us yet. Again, I orient the shock in a particular direction just to make things easier that way you, you just everything fits like it should you don't have to think about it and after all the strut oil has leaked all over it now the rubber is blowing up and yeah. Okay, Bulldog from the future here, inserting myself into this video. Uh, if you are really good at paying attention, you'll see the mistake I just made here. My daughter pointed it out because she was standing there watching me, but I ended up having to take that strut back apart and put the bumper back into it. That was that piece that slides down over the shaft. So it is done right. So don't jump me in the comments. Billows is a mess, but we live on a rock road anyway, so it is what it is. I usually don't replace these nuts, even the high-end replacement parts, the hardware they send with them half the time isn't right, so I just don't use it. everything that lets the impact move it down and torque it up. My strut bearing feels all right. So I'm gonna see if we can get by with just doing this for the meantime. We're gonna repeat this for the other side. 
I just, it, this really wasn't a very in-depth video. Wasn't very long, I'm sorry. But I'm not feeling all that great right now. So since I was doing this today, I figured I'd better show this because I honestly haven't done struts like this in three or four years as evidenced by the dust on the spring compressor. So if this helped you out, great. Like, comment, subscribe, hit your little bell notification, share it all around. We'll talk to you later.